Welcome to Egan, Minnesota, USA. As you see the pit decked out in there, red, white, and blue. Egan Wildcat football on the air. Tonight, the Wildcats and the Lakeville North Panthers. My name is Mike Cook, pleased to be joined once again by Mr. Nathan Cron. And Nathan, we were here two weeks ago. Rosemont Irish come up here. Egan absolutely dominated the number nine team in class 6A, 17-6. Last week, Cats go to number two, Lakeville South. They play with them for three plus quarters before South pulls away, gets a two score win that was not indicative of how the game was played. Tonight, Lakeville North is here. They're number four. Cats, third tough test in a row, and I think they're more than ready. Well, it doesn't get any easier for these Wildcats as they, as they claw through this particular grouping in this conference. And as you said, the Wildcats, it's, a lot of it's started off between their ears. You know, how are they going to compete with the good programs, the Rosemounts, the Souths? They've done that. Now it's time to put it all together again, play the kind of game they played when they played Rosemount, a dominating offensive performance, a defensive performance that was opportunistic, everybody keeping their head, no dumb penalties holding on to the football and staying away from negative yardage. If they do that, this is going to be one heck of a football game tonight, Mike. Yeah, you see the Lakeville North student section. Neon is their theme tonight. A lot of non-Lakeville North students filling up on the other sideline as well in the bleachers here in Wildcat country. Again, USA, the theme tonight for the Egan Wildcats. It is senior night here in Wildcat country. H opportunity to show you that. They just had that a few moments ago, but we'll show you that during halftime of this one. We've got the colors will be coming out momentarily, and then it's going to be some Friday night lights here in Wildcat country, second to last home game of the year. And we'll throw at the public dress announcer, Dave Giles, to start tonight's festivities. South Subdistrict varsity football game between the visiting Panthers from Lakeville North High School and your Egan Wildcats. The Lakeville North Panthers will be introduced as a team. Their head coach is Brian Bosson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our visitors to Wildcat Stadium this evening, the Lakeville North Panthers. Well, I mentioned it's the Friday Night Lights festivities. You look at the top of that screen, you saw finer meats and eats. They're here. Brick oven bus is here. And of course, the Egan Wildcats are here. And we're in the home blues. The Cats set to take the field. Jack Hansen, one of many seniors on this squad, brought with his parents before the game being honored. First, Nick Johnson, fifth year head coach for your Egan Wildcats. Brian Washington, he's the head man over at Lakeville North. Jay shaking every player's hand as they come down. Last of the Egan group onto the field, including the coaches. You see Lakeville North, they're lined up back in the north end zone facing the flag here in Wildcat Country. Band is done, and it will be time for our national anthem. And again, please be joined by the color guard, 
here in Wildcat Country. American Legion Post 594 of Egan. They are Lance Ashland, Joel Defina, Mark Frasconi, and Danny Sanoa. Following the national anthem, please remain standing until the colors are off the field. The national anthem will be performed by the Egan High School Cavaliers and Sonos Choirs under the direction of Jim Cox and Jean Samso. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Fans, please remain standing. You can hear the Egan band, they're fired up. The pit, they're fired up in the red, white, and blue tonight. The neon over in the student section for Lakeville North. Nathan, I think we're gonna have ourselves a whale of a football game in front of a whale of a crowd tonight. Well, it's an excited crowd and on both sides. Both sides, you know, both sets of fans are expecting their teams to take another step towards the ultimate goal for the Wildcats. It's it's not just being respectable, but be competing with some of the best programs in the state. For the Lakeville North Panthers, it's a step towards a, a section seed, high section seed, a, st a state championship run. It's, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you expect out of Lakeville North. So right now, I mean, you've got two sets of fans that are excited, the players are excited. If the Wildcats play the kind of game that they played against Rosemount, it's gonna be one heck of a football game. Yeah, as we said, that Rosemount win was two weeks ago on this very turf. A 17-6 Wildcat wire-to-wire -wire win over the Rosemont Irish. First time in 11 years the Cats, or first time since 2011, Cats have beaten Rosemont. Again, Egan went to Lakeville South last Thursday, hung with the Cougars for three plus quarters. A couple of untimely penalties in the fourth quarter helped with their downfall, but they still put a scare into Lakeville South. And I was talking to North head coach Brian Vossen before the game. One thing he kept telling his players, guys, this is not old Egan. Be ready for a fight is basically the message he was telling his guys. Well, very shortly, Mike Cook, we're going to find out whether his players are, are listening to him, right? Whether they're really listening. You know, teenage teenagers are, sometimes they listen, sometimes they have to find out the hard way. We're going to see right now what the Panthers have dialed up. Drew Colander, number 99, will be kicking off for the Panthers, moving right to left. And the Eagle Wildcats are going to field this football at about the seven yard line. Coming near side, A.J. Clark out to about the 14. Good coverage downfield by the Panthers. A lot of people looking for a flag of some sort. And a flag was thrown by Cook by the referee. I'm trying to figure out what that was for. I sure hope it wasn't for the big block that we saw because that was as clean as they come from, my, from where I was standing. We're going to find out momentarily. 
On the receiving team, blind side block. A blind side block? It, they were both Half facing each other. I'm not sure how it's a blind side block. But in any event, safety first. From the seven yard line, the Eagan Wildcats will get things rolling this evening. Imagine Carson Schwamm, number 17, the senior, will be leading this Egan offense when we will see a healthy dose of number two, Tate Gage, this evening. As you look at Schwan, number 17, another one of the seniors on this Wildcats squad. Lakeville did give up a 99-yard touchdown to Farmington a week ago. A little swing pass, about five broken tackles later. And Schwamm, he'll keep it. That's the first down and more for the senior signal caller. Put him out to the 26 and a 19-yard scamper for the Wildcats. Well, great blocking on at point of attack. There was great blocking on the outside. Did not get the number of that outside receiver for the Wildcat. Check it out here. Yeah, assist. That's, assist number five, right? Look at the great blocking, doing a good job of squaring to the frame and not committing the holding penalty. You say 20 yards, actually. They're going to spot that ball at the 27 yard line. If you look at the Egan sideline, got to like what they see there. Head coach Nick Johnson, we're in the shorts. Fresh set of downs for the Cats. Evans was under center that time. And the ball carrier get us out across the 30, maybe four or five yard pickup. It's gonna be, of course, number two, Tate Gage. He gets the bulk of the carries for this Wildcat squad. At 92 yards a week ago at South. But most of those were in the three and four yard pickup variety. If you see the ball going between the tackles tonight, pretty good bet is number two in blue. Lakeville got back. No, they didn't get back, I don't think. Ison was moving for the Wildcats, but I believe North jumped. And indeed, they did. Well, you and I were saying before we came on the air that penalties could play a huge role tonight. Penalties and turnovers is you've got two teams that are just, they're smash mouth offense. So they're both just run between the tackles and you know, our line's gonna beat your line. Yeah, neither team wants to stay, get be in negative yardage situations. That means losing yards or not or getting no gains on, on a down. Neither team wants to, you know, put the ball in the air too much. Uh, Lakeville North a little more liked it, apt to do that perhaps in the Wildcats, but big penalty there for the Wildcats. Schwamm will, he will hand it off. That'll be a first down for the Egan Wildcats. Again, Gage, the ball carrier for Egan. Hey, we've got a change to the Egan offensive line tonight as Anthony uh, Hayberry moves over from tight end to left tackle for the Wildcats this year. Uh, to Highbury, I should say. As Alex Less is going to go play linebacker now for the Wildcats because uh, Christian Langhorst got hurt down in that Lakeville South game. Unfortunately for Christian, it's a season ending UCL injury. Straight ahead, Cats. There's the Egan offense right there in one play. Get about three yards by Gage. His third carry of the night. It's going to be second and about five from the 44-yard line. And that is exactly what Coach Nick Johnson wants from these Wildcats. Grinding out yards, taking care of the football. Remember, Rosemont had only three offensive possessions in the entire first half last last home game for the Wildcats. Wildcats love to do that again to the Panthers. Tyson moves up to the wing back. Two receivers left. Schwamm, spinorama. Schwamm maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. More than likely, I'm going to say he loses a yard. Nobody on that Lakeville line was fooled by that play. That was excellent penetration that time by the Panthers. They did a nice job. The Wildcat offensive line, a little bit leaky there. And once, once somebody gets through, everybody else rallied. And that's the sign of a good, well-coached defense that they're going to rally. And it's not just one guy trying to make a tackle. It's four Lakeville Panthers. Number nine, Antonio Menard. Menard, first man in for the Panthers. That's the name we're going to call a lot tonight. He is an Air Force Academy commit. On his Twitter, he lists a 4.0 GPA. One of the coaches told me it's actually even higher than that. Schwamm, he'll keep. 
Schwamm will get met by a number of Panthers. Two yard pickup. Punt time most likely for the Egan Wildcats. It's going to be fourth and about four from their own 45. Although I don't see Elijah Montour, number 12, coming in for the Wildcats. We know Nick Johnson likes to gamble. This is an interesting call here on fourth down and short. Well, it's not short. It's not yeah, fourth and about four. fourth and about four. It's not short, but it's it's an interesting call. No, no question about that. But hey, if, if you can't get four yards, then you know, give your chance, give yourself a chance to get four yards here. Or do you try and draw the Panthers off once again? Could certainly do that. Two receivers right. Ison moving around. He'll come back and go to the wing on the right side. Ison goes back in motion. Schwamm maybe audible at the line. Cats, yep, going to be a delay game on Egan. Yeah, or timeout. Or timeout taken by timeout the Wildcats. Timeout taken by the Wildcats. So that was just an attempt to draw them off. Imagine they'll they'll try to punt the ball now. Well, at least I would imagine they would. I don't know if you're going to. Wouldn't you just take the delay if you were going to punt it? Go back five? Well, why do you even take the delay? Why well, not just punt I, the ball? I agree, but that's why we're up here. Nick Johnson and the Egan coaching staff, that's why they're uh, the big time decision makers. Well, try to get them to go, you know, jump off sides. They already did it once earlier. We're going to have a punt. That's fine. You know, you you move the ball. You got, you've got one, two, you've got two first downs. Uh, you move the ball out from the shadow of your own goal post. You're going to flip the field. If you can, if you can cover this, get a decent punt and cover this well, you know, Lakeville, you know, Lakeville will have to drive a little bit for you. Lane Johnson, the man back deep for the Panthers. Fake, fake. Cass, did they get enough? It depends on the spot. It is going to be close. I think they're short. The near side referee. Oh, no, they are The I near side they're... referee says, look, I think he says first down. Oh, the near side gonna... referee, look, that nose of that ball looks like it's on the 40, might be touching the 49. Chain time. Yeah, they only had to get to the 49. We'll see. It's going to be close. And it was Gage on the carry. You and I are lined up at about the opposite 45 from our view, so we've got a little bit of an angle as we look at it. It's going to be close, no question about that. I think they're going to be a little short, but let's take a look. they got to get some pull it. Tighten up the chains. They are short. I imagine they're going to be short. Half yep. a yard, yep. Gutsy call does not pay off for the Wildcats. Well, part of that, I, you have to wonder, Mike Cook, if that part of that is just that, that that maybe there's a little bit of hesitancy on the part of the Wildcats to punt that ball. Maybe their punt team isn't quite where they want them to be. And, and so maybe they say, hey, let's give this a try and see what happens. They did have one punt a week ago, and unfortunately it was a shank. But, you know, I think you also got to look at it as you're trying to set a tone here. Well, now it's Lakeville North with an opportunity to set a tone. As Riley Grossman, number four, will lead the Lakeville North offense. Grossman just a junior, but his third year as a starter. Boston was joking to me before the game that said something about uh, Grossman. They're like, yeah, he's now 37. <laughs> well, not quite, but just, again, the third year starter, only a junior. Boston telling me that he soaks up information like a sponge. And they're going to go to the air first down. They got a man far side. Ball is up. Ball it falls to the turf just off the hands of number 12, Johnson. There was an eight yard pickup just waiting to happen, but just a little high on the throw. It was an interception waiting to happen, too. Look at this ball go straight up in the air. Oh, my heavens. Wildcat defensive backs, another step closer Owen Ford. to the side, and Ford's got that one. Ford had a couple of picks last week against South. Out of the eye for the Panthers. Seven and a half to go opening quarter. Wilkie straight ahead. Wilkie, that's a first down and more. 24 for 12 on his first carry of the football game. And that's that's a, that's the Lakeville North offense right there. You just run between the tackles, and they said this kid is so tough, so strong, he will just, he will continually break tackles. 
and he's one of those kids that as the game goes on, he gets stronger. So we'll keep well, an eye on that tonight. Well, he certainly showed it there. That was that was excellent technique. The offensive line did a nice job of getting a block at the point of attack. Wildcats saying that ball came out. I think that's, I think that's a bit of a wishful thinking on the Wildcats' part. Which is only going to be a 10-yard pickup. They spotted at the 36. First down either way. That play looks familiar. Only got about five that time. Actually, maybe four. But again, Wilkie, the ball carrier. Wilkie, by the way, he's a Minnesota Duluth commit for the uh, from Lakeville North. Runs a 4-5-40. Benches 3-15. Uh, vertical of about 35 inches, according to uh, his Twitter page. Second six, North. You go to the air, nope. And that's gonna be about a five yard pickup that time by number 33, Sam Ripplinger. He generally the second most carries so far for North. Watch will give him about four that time before he's upended by a number of Wildcats. On forward, first man in, it looks like for Egan. Number 23. So a couple of four yard runs sets up third and two for North. Just inside the Wildcat 30. Halfway through this opening quarter, straight ahead, Wilkie. First down, Panthers. That's down to the 23 yard line. Give them about five. But more importantly, the sticks will move. And we mentioned last week, North, they, they held on to beat Farmington, but they were up 21-0 in the second quarter and then just did not score the rest of the night. And I'm sure that was not on the bingo card, right? That was not, not what they were looking to do. And right now they're, they're dominating the Wildcat off defensive line and linebacking front seven. First and 10 Panthers. Grossman. Got a man wide open down the middle. Is he, A, is it caught? It is not caught. But that guy was wide open down the middle. That was number 11, Sebastian Fry. Well, let's see if he, let's take a look at the replay. How close was he on this? Yeah, yeah he's gonna want that one back, absolutely. But again, look at that. There is no blue shirts anywhere near him. Great call by the Panthers. Second down. First down. Just powering inside the 10-yard line. That's a 15-yard pickup. Ripplinger. Boy, they made that look easy. They sure did. Absolutely. And the Wildcats have got to stop stop catching blocks and they've got to start attacking the line of scrimmage. We've talked about it before and that's what they have to do against a good offensive line for the Lakeville Panthers. They've got to stop catching blocks and start delivering blows. North looking to get some points on their opening possession. And they're going to be continuing to look for it but they got about half of the necessary distance that time. Wilkie gets it inside the five. Looks like they're going to spot him maybe just a hair inside the three. Again, just domination at the line of scrimmage thus far for Lakeville North. Second and goal from about the three. Wilkie does have three rushing touchdowns this year. And I believe you can make it four. Yes, you can. Touchdown, Panthers. Panthers made that look a little bit too easy, Mike Cook. Just a little bit too easy. They were delivering, they were pushing the defensive line, the front seven around. And, well, and the, the Panthers just did, it, they just didn't make any mistakes. Look at this. I mean, you know, look at that he, surge. Yeah, it's a good surge, and he picks out a good hole and sticks it in hard. He doesn't, he doesn't dither. He doesn't. He's not prevaricating, he's just sticking it in. He's not what? Prevaricating, sorry, that was. <laughs> Six down the north. Let's see if they can tack on the PAT with Colander. 
And plenty of leg, plenty of accuracy. 4.06 to go. Opening quarter, 7 nothing. Lakeville North. Nine plays, 54 yards for the Panthers. Drive took three and a half minutes. Well, that's very that's a very Egan-like drive from what, where they've found success the last couple of weeks. You look at the Rosemont game, you look at the Lakeville South game. Even going back to the Mayo game, it was just running lengthy drives like that. Well, now it's between the ears, I think, of the, of the Wildcats. I mean, it's it's a situation where they need to buckle down and say, hey, you know, we're not the same Wildcat team that would just fold up and go away when, when you know, the other team would get a touchdown or a couple of touchdowns on us. We're going to keep battling. We're going to climb back in this thing. And the Wildcats can absolutely do that. They just got to—they got to put together some first downs here and, and move the football a little bit, and then everything will be okay. The North had three first downs on that nine-play drive. And once again, kicking off will be number 99, Drew Colander. Really, no wind to speak of. Based on his other kickoff, the Cats should have a return opportunity. And they will go far side. Ison across the 20. And he gets upended, pushed out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. He's got good coverage downfield by the Panthers. Max Molina, I believe, among those in there for Lakeville North. So the Cats will take over 3.59 to go. Down by seven. A slightly better offensive field position here for the Cats, not starting inside their own 10 yard line. But, you know, really it's now it's up to the seniors. We, it was senior night, senior recognition earlier. You know, you saw that here on ETV and it's up to these seniors. It's up to the the players who, who, who have been here the longest, who have worked the hardest. It's up to those guys like Carson Schwamm to put the team on their backs and get some first downs. And they're gonna pitch it on first down. Here's Brooklyn Evans. Finds a seam, can he get to the corner? Not quite, close enough, he gets out near the 42, maybe the 43 yard line. Bottom line, 16 yard pickup on first down by Brooklyn Evans on a play that looked very similar to the two runs that he busted a week ago. A big credit there to the guys blocking at the point of attack. Let's see, let's let see if I can get the number on that one. I think that was, I think that was Brandt on the outside. Couldn't quite tell, I'm gonna have to, look again but bottom line is it was nice good blocking but not committing that holding penalty it's easy to commit a holding penalty in space and he didn't do that Schwamm will keep Schwamm will pitch Isom does a nice job of hanging on to it gets the corner Isom and he's going to get knocked out of bounds at about the north 40 actually make it down all the way to the 37 they're going to say that's another 20 yards for the Egan Wildcats Two plays, 37 yards for Egan. However, there's some laundry out there, and it's yellow. Temper your enthusiasm, Wildcat fans. This one's coming back, I think. From the spot of the foul, for replay first down. Yeah, it is 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so it's only going to end up being a about a five and a half yard penalty. Bottom line is it knocks out a 20 yard run. It does, it does. It turns into a five yard penalty, but it, it knocks out the 20 yard run and it knocks the Wildcats off schedule. And that's right, that whole, probably based on where that flag was located was right at the point of attack, Mike Cook. And that's that's gonna get called if it's, if it's there, they're gonna call it. First and 15. And we'll be second and 15. As Lakeville North all over that. Reese Hunt, number seven, among others in there for Lakeville North. This play said, look at that. First man through 48. Boy, he busted his way through quickly. That's uh, Emmanuel Hardy from his linebacker spot, a senior for this Lakeville North squad. They get second and 15. <laughs> Two forty-one and counting. Opening quarter here on ETV. Fast-moving opening quarter. We are your home for Wildcat sports. Oh, and false start. Brooklyn Evans. Cats are going five yards the wrong way. Okay. 
don't generally like to call out guys, but that one was pretty obvious who it was. At well, the, yeah. the wide receiver spot. When, and, yep, everybody at home could call the penalty just like the referees. You know, you too can be a referee. You you can watch this play <laughs> and call a penalty, but the worst. Now it's second down to 19 and option offense. This is not. <laughs> this is definitely not where the Wildcats needed to be. Nope. Second and 19, officially. Cats have no receivers in the set. They're going to pitch it near side, Brooklyn Evans. There's one of him, one blocker, and three white shirts. Guess, guess who won the battle there? Well, oh, yeah, a gain of like, what, maybe two yards. Maybe. But they, they, good job by the Lakeville Panthers stringing that out. Sets up a third down that might as well be third down in, in Rosemount. Ison leading the way, and yeah. Actually, there might have been four Panthers that were almost in on that play, but it was number six was the first man there. That was Max Moline. He had a pick a week ago in that win over Farmington. The third and a long ways. Long ways. Got to get to the 47 of Lakeville North. Tyson goes in motion, coming near side. Evans cuts the corner, but again, way too many white shirts. Lakeville North all over that play. Number uh, eight, Forsgren, first man in. Number two, minimal pickup for the Cats, and it's punt time. We think. Well, they did go for the fake I, punt last I, time, but I, pretty safe bet this fourth, one's getting booted. Yeah, fourth and 11 I, at midfield, given what happened last time. I, I think they will kick this ball away. Now, really, now Wildcats really have to buckle down. Tour gets it up, off, kind of a wobbler, and that's going to go out of bounds. That caught on the near side by one of the Egan coaches, but where did it go out of bounds? And they're going to say is at the Lakeville North 40. So net of 18 on that punt. And Lakeville North will take over for the second time tonight with 127 to go in quarter number one. Marks right down nine plays last time. And all of them that were successful were runs. There were, there were two incompletions, however. Egan Band trying to fire up the student section. Grossman in the offense. Grossman to throw, a little swing pass, far side, got his man. Uh, stumbling and bumbling, still picks up about seven. Well, if he could have stayed on his feet, that definitely had a 15 or 20 yard gain written on it. It did. It was a great play fake that time by the Lakeville Panthers. Our camera person, my eyes, everybody. I thought maybe he'd handed it off. Instead, pulls it that pulls it out and throws it to the flat. Sets up a very makeable, easy second down. Now they can they can you know Lakeville, Lakeville Panthers can open up the playbook a little bit, maybe push this and stretch this defense a little bit. I was going to say, bottom line, it was a six-yard pickup. Straight ahead. Wilkie to the Egan, 43-44. Didn't quite think he was down. He took a couple extra steps, but officials were right there. The bottom line is that's a, that's a pickup of, they're going to say, just 10 yards. Let's see if he is, does indeed go down. He... <laughs> I'm not sure his knee ever touched. No, and 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 I, and I think he could have taken off on that. Yeah, one. he absolutely could have. Um. But the officials blew the whistle. Grossman, near side, and finds his tight end for a minimal pickup that time. Again, this is fr uh, Fries this time with the catch. Gets it down to about the 36 on what was the final play of quarter number one. First quarter dominated by the Lakeville Panthers. That time the that particular play, the Wildcat defense just got caught too, 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 too much stretching going on, right? Yep. One player or two players were being asked to do three different things. And that's just what happened is there is that the, you know, the Lakeville backfield, Lakeville quarterback was able to pick out who he wanted, where he wanted to go. If the quarterback's going to keep booting the ball out like that, you've got to put pressure on him, and the Wildcats are going to have to figure out a way to do that. Whether that's committing guys to rush, whether it's a blitz, whether it's a, a spy, whatever it is, they've got, to, they've got to do that because unlimited time back there. We've already seen Lakeville complete passes and then have passes that should have been completed that are going to burn the Wildcats if they don't change it up. Absolutely. 
Hey, real quick, you were here last night. We had a couple of soccer games for the Wildcats against Burnsville. A couple of very one-sided soccer affairs. Yeah, they absolutely were. Both the boys and girls beat Burnsville last night after beating Apple Valley on Tuesday, and so they're uh, they're looking. Both teams looking good heading into sections. We talk about that uh, at the conclusion of this play, or we can do it now because exactly. the referees have th thrown a flag. I got a snap infraction, maybe offsides. You come out of the quarter that is all Lakeville North, and the Cats just helping them out, right? They're in the first play of quarter number two with a with the first down. Yeah, we talked about avoiding penalties and holding on to the ball. The Cats have done one and not absolutely not done the other. Grossman, fresh set of downs. Near side, Wilkie. Somebody lost a helmet out there. That'll get him down inside the 10, outside the 15, down to about the 13. See, somebody lost a helmet, but bottom line, 18-yard pickup, first down in the red zone for Lakeville North. Already up by a 7-0 count. Take a look at that replay. It's just blocking at the point of attack. You got Wildcats getting knocked flat on their backs. That's that's just not going to get it done. They've, they've got to do better. Excuse me, better job of attacking the line scrimmage. Yeah, that was Menard, number nine, leading the way for Lakeville North. Fresh set of downs from the 13. Straight ahead. Yeah, inside the 10, inside the 5. That was 33. Ripplinger puts it down. Looks like about a nine yard pickup on first down. But yeah, just look at the surge up on the guys in front. Kruger tries to make a stop. He, maybe he gets dragged for a couple of extra yards there for the Wildcats. A lot of options in the playbook right now for Coach Brian Vossen as you look, well, you saw him briefly in the gray shirt. Second and one. You're gonna send one guy wide to the left top of your screen, top left of your screen. Grossman will keep it. Will he get to the corner? He powers his way in. Six more for Lakeville North. Grossman from the four. Just a nice call and a nice job on the fake. A lot of Wildcat players bit. Lakeville North really making it look easy, Mike. And the neon. Yes, things are definitely bright for the neon student section of Lakeville North with a 13-0 lead. Here we are early quarter number two. Will this one make it 14? Yep. Six plays, 60 yards for the Panthers. 14-0 Lakeville North in the lead. Maybe quick up, finish your soccer story from last night with an opportunity. Yeah, both teams heading into sections looking pretty pretty strong. The uh, Wildcat girls uh, are within an eyelash of claiming the conference title, as well as the number one seed in sections. Uh, Lake Wildcat boys, uh, second place right now in this conference, uh, probably looking at a top two or three seed in sections. And, uh, so both programs really on the up. Hard to believe soccer playoffs are what, two weeks away? They start on October 12th. Man. And it's, you know, we said it earlier in the broadcast, this is the second to last home game of the regular season for the Wildcats. Back here in two weeks when Forest Lake comes to town for a homecoming affair. Next week, the Wildcats are at winless Farmington. But that's cut. Yes, Farmington is winless, but they played North tough last week. Played Rosemount tough last night, only lost by eight to the Irish. So yeah, they might be 0-5, but it's not gonna be an easy trip down to Tiger Country for the Wildcats. Lakeville North, they get Mayo next week. I believe that is the Panther homecoming. Just a reminder that we ETV is planning, planning in mind you, to cover the Wildcat soccer teams if they have home playoff games. So check your local listings for showtimes near you. Ison, that's the 20, he's got a head of steam. Out to about the 26. 
37 yard line. His helmet went to about the 38. And Cats, this will be their best starting position of their three drives this evening. Actually, we'll be out at the 30. Let's see, we got to get a football down. Actually, they're going to put it all the way out to the 37. Well, this is a drive that the Cats need to get something going. Schwamm leading the Egan offense still. Two receivers to the right. Straight ahead, Gage. That works out across midfield. That's a 13-yard pickup by Tate Gage. 14 yards, first down Wildcats. Nice job by the guys. Can't tell who that was from the right tackle that pushed in. Really created that hole for Gage. I believe it, was, it might have been Jack Hansen. Cole Will 78. Cole Will 55 getting onto the second level, which gives the running back the chance to make a, a short gain, a longer gain. Yep, Tyler Boats over there, tight end, number 42. Straight ahead, Gage. Again, there goes that pile. A nice pickup, six yards there on first down for Tate and the Wildcats. Yeah, just nice job of getting downfield. Cole Meyer to help leading the way there for the Wildcat offense. 67 you saw in there, Aiden Hendler. He was, again, another one of the seniors who was honored along with his folks before the game tonight. Again, hopefully we'll be able to show you that ceremony at halftime, which is nine minutes and 40 seconds away of game time. And nope, been doing that time. Number of Lakeville North Panthers all over that one, including number 91, Braden Owens, a name we've called I think a couple of times now tonight. So it's going to be third and about four for the Wildcats. Presumably four down territory for Egan. I think that has to be the case. Mike. A lot of noise from the North student section. Pitch, Brooklyn Evans. Brooklyn Evans got some wheels, and he gets inside the 35. That's about an eight-yard pickup on third down. More importantly, the sticks are moving. I love how Evans stuck his nose in quickly. He, he, he didn't guess. He didn't dance. He just stuck it in hard, and that's what you have to do if, in that situation. That was a huge first down for the Wildcats. Strive started back at the 37-yard line. At 10.48 on the clock when this drive started. We're now down to 8.20. And again, there goes that pile. Another five-yard run by Gage on first down. And this is something the Wildcats will take all night long. And Gage, he had 26 of Egan's 52 carries a week ago at South. I did ask Coach Nick Johnson the other day, how's Gage feeling? He said, he hasn't said a thing. So, Well, it's one thing to get hit when you're getting five, six yards a clip. It's another thing to get hit when in the backfield. So yeah. I, 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 you, I'm not a scientist, but I think they feel different. And it's going to be third and about three now for the Wildcats. A minimal pickup that time. We had a number of Lakeville North Panthers were on there to go gobble up Schwamm. Dorian Addison, uh, 6'3", 265, number 95. You cannot miss him out there. Ah, he's a big boy in Schwamm. You know, we saw in, in you know, again, the last game we broadcast here from Lakeville, or excuse me, Lakeville, from Wildcat Stadium. The Wildcats against Rosemont Irish had a number of quarterback sneaks on fourth and short, third and short. That was a. That, I wonder if that was a test to see what kind of, off, you know, what what they can do on a quarterback sneak in a short, short yardage situation. Straight ahead. Assume it's got to be Gage. That should be a first down. Wildcats. 
Actually, Nick Tesdall, his first carry of the football game. I, I was wondering when Nick was going to get a carry. Does a nice job of getting in there every once in a while and kind of letting Gage get a quick blow. So first down at the 24 of Lakeville North. By far, best drive of the night for the Egan Wildcats. Six and a half to go, second quarter here on ETV. Once again, we are your home for Wildcats sports. Gage will keep. Gage will fall forward to maybe get a yard. Seagun on the stop was Tisdall actually again. So, all right, so one yard that time for Tesdall. Two carries on the last two plays, total of four yards. Nice to give Gage a bit of a rest there, you know, and give him a chance to, you know, catch his breath and kind of get ready mentally for the next handful of next series. And Tesdall does a nice job of sticking it in hard too. And he's a little bit little bigger shoulder pads than Gage too, so maybe maybe moves that pile a little differently. Didn't say better, didn't say worse, just differently. <laughs> two receivers to the right for Schwamm and the Egan offense. Gage will not get to the 20-yard line. He's gobbled up. Looks like first man in there for Lakeville North. Check. Number 53 is his first tackle of the football game. Jack McKinnon. Kernan. Third down and about six, I would think, for Egan. And as you said before, Mike Cook, it's probably four down territory. So if you know that, that helps you on third down, right? It helps you It helps you think about, okay, we only need to get four or five yards here. We, If, if we don't get a first down, we get five yards, we're still okay. Sam Sisk, top of your screen, number five. Had three catches a week ago. Evans, yeah, that play should work pretty well. Brooklyn Evans, that's a first down. Down near the 10-yard line goes number 11. First down, Wildcats. Sticks going to move once again. Fourth first down on this drive for the Egan Wildcats. Nice job by Ison and Sisk to the outside blocking. Again, it's so hard to block and not commit holding penalties because these defensive backs are shifty. They're, they're, they're going to spin. They're going to do whatever they can to get off your block. And if you hold on to that block, you'll commit a penalty, right? And they did a nice job of staying within the frame, moving their feet, not letting the guy spin off. They're going to say nine yards to the 11. So you can get a first down without a touchdown. Gage. So the heck with that. I'm going to score from there. And he does not. <laughs> Remember that first down without a touchdown? I think that might have just happened. It doesn't happen very often. No, it does not. It doesn't happen very often. As you see, Gage probably a little frustrated. Watch him go over the right side here. Good full block to the inside. Ison, yep. yep. I think his bottom was down. Yeah, it's a good, I think it's a good call. Yeah, we're going to see some great camera work from our award-winning ETV crew. I don't know. I mean, geez. Yeah, I think the bottom hit before. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if we had v VAR, we might overturn that. You but know what? Just, just give him the ball right here. Actually, Schwamm's going to keep it. He's going to get a push from Gage. Six points, Egan. Well, a trend that started with the Rosemount game. Carson Schwamm pushing it over from one yard out, Mike Cook. And now we've we've seen it now three times in a row for the Wildcats. I like Gage, though, behind. He gave him that push. Cole Meyer leading the way. Hanson for the PAT. They'll cut the lead in half. It's amazing how a late touchdown here in the first half changes the complexion of this game. Kick is blocked, however. Well, we saw that in the Rosemont game. Of course, that happened to Rosemont. We were wondering if that would come back to haunt the Irish. As Menard with the block. That's a big effort. I mean, special teams are so important. Coaches will tell you that a third of your games are one lost or tied because of the kicking game, and already we've seen the Wildcats struggle with the a shank punt, you know, a punt that didn't really flip the field. We've got a blocked extra point, uh, you know, and those kinds of things will add up, right? Let's see if we can see where the block came in. The block came in from number, yeah, it was number nine. Menard, I could yeah. not, could, I'd have to look at it one more time to see exactly where he came from, but yeah, young man, clap your hands because you just blocked the PAT. It's a big deal. As we said, he's an Air Force Academy commit. 14-6 Wildcats as you look at most of the students here, the 
USA theme. Of course, when they're back here in two weeks for homecoming, it'll be school spirit colors. You see a lot of green and blue and silver and white. Should be a packed house that evening as Forest Lake comes back here. Of course, last time Forest Lake was here, they ended the Wildcats season a year, last October. Coleman in the kickoff for the Wildcats. This will be Forsgren back deep for North as the cast just pooch it out of bounds. Uh, Colamine is trying to he's trying to put that in a place that there won't be much of a return and he there wasn't much of a return but it has to stay <laughs> in bounds. Yep. Otherwise the uh, otherwise the Panthers get some really great field position. I think it's the is it the 45 yard line? 35. 35 yard line. Yeah, that that almost worked at South a week ago. There was one kick I remember in particular that Kick out of bounds. South barely Bobby recovered at the time. Yard line, first down Lakeville. So 332 to go in the opening half. Panthers up 14-6. North also is going to get the ball to start the second half. Critical drive here for the Wildcats. Got to keep the North off the off the board. I was going to make sure you don't let Lakeville North double dip, so to speak, with late first half and then one right away in the second half. It's a good start for that Egan defense. Wilkie gets wrapped up by a host of Egan Wildcats. Bennett Larson, among others, in there wearing the blue. Maybe a pickup of about three. North has all three timeouts. They're not going to be in any hurry, right? They want to keep running. You know, they want to get a first down, get across midfield, and then figure out, okay, do we want to throw this ball? Do we want to go deep? What do we want to do? Hey, want to give credit? That tackle was Hans Anderson. I believe that his first... Uh, might have been his first tackle of the year for number 92, the Egan Jr. Happy birthday to Hans tomorrow, by the way. His dad, Josh, had a birthday earlier this week. Busy busy week in the Anderson household, no question about that. Absolutely. Uh, it's good gang tackling there by the Wildcats. It's still a gain. Got about three. Yeah, it's still a gain, but, you know, it's third and five is is... You can line up and play third down. You can't line up and play third down if you let him get eight. Yep. Big stop potential for Egan. Big potential first down for the Panthers. Edge, Panthers, Wilkie, big edge. Wilkie, 30, makes one move. Wilkie inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. That's a pickup of 40 for Lakeville North. Oh, just when you think the Wildcats have got something going, maybe getting, not getting a stop, but you know, maybe getting a stop. And <laughs> our our replay shows a little bit of, a little bit of naughtiness in the offensive <laughs> line. There is a little bit of holding up front there. Uh, and when I mean a little bit, I mean a lot. But it, it that, but that doesn't wipe away a, a brilliant run by Wilkie. Officially, it's going to be 39, and they're going to spot it at the 20. Potato, potato, whatever. Ripplinger. That's a first down inside the 10. Just bouncing to the outside. Kruger with a stop for the Egan Wildcats. But Kruger's in the secondary. Cats got to be getting to these backs before Kruger is forced to make the play. Actually, they're going to mark him a little short of that first down. I thought maybe he had the first down, but they're spotting too. him at the 11. So you know, if I was Coach Nick Johnson for the Wildcats, I might get a timeout here because, you know, after this play, if they don't score, I'd get a timeout and, and slow my guys down and give them a chance to get a breather. Yeah, you see the clock ticking bottom of your screen, 109 and counting. That's the first down. Down to the five. Clock will stop while they spot it. Ripplinger again, the ball carrier. Give him six. Hanson with the stop. Yeah, just too much leakage, too many, you know, too many opportunities there for, for the, the Panthers just to keep pushing. Lakeville calls timeout. Yep. Oh, check it. Well, they announced Lakeville with pointer to Egan. They uh, I I'm equally confused. Bottom line is we've got a break in the action with 52 seconds to go. Lakeville North looking to put another six or seven up on the board. Here before halftime for the Panthers. 
I'm going to give a shout out to Danny Schultz watching us from Augusta, Wisconsin. Danny, thanks for tuning in to ETV. We've got fans from all over the country. You can always hit us up on Twitter, social media, if you want to give a shout out to somebody over the air. But thanks, Danny, for weighing in and checking us out, probably on the YouTube channel. I don't think ETV's uh, cable access goes quite that far. But in any event, thank you, sir, for joining us. And go Cats. Well, we mentioned Hans Anderson has a birthday tomorrow. Dad Josh had one the other day. Uh, Bill and Carol Hopp normally here, but they're watching us from Burnsville tonight. If there's Hans grandparents on his mom's side. And, of course, he also has aunts, uncles, and cousins that are checking in from the great state of Michigan tonight watching Wildcat football as well. And down to the one. Forty seconds. Clock continues to roll. And Menard just leading the way. Big number nine. Tick, tick, tick. Twenty-seven seconds to go in the half. Wildcats have got to attack, attack the line of scrimmage, not catch blocks. Grossman straight ahead. He gets a shove from behind. Is he into the blue paint? No, he is just shy. Timeout taken by Lakeville North. 12 ticks to go. Well, that was a heck of an effort by the Wildcat. Absolutely. Wildcat defense. I thought for sure that, that was going to the end zone. I should, number 50, Alex Less is in there. He moved, This is his first game at inside linebacker as he moved, moved over from the tackle position. Carter Will also on the inside for the Wildcats. And you see Nick Johnson talking to one of the officials kind of on the top center of your screen. I'm not sure what that's about, but with 12 seconds to go. Yeah, I want to give at least one more shout out. I know we're, they're watching us from the Marriott Hotel in Piscataway, New Jersey tonight. Steve checking in from the Marriott. Well, guys, you're with us out in the shadows of uh, NYC as it's USA out here tonight. Would like to see the Wildcats call a timeout here as soon as the Lakeville Panthers line up. Call a timeout. Call a timeout. You can't take them with you. Call a timeout here Absolutely. and think about it some more. Third and one, Panthers. Wilkie cuts it up on touch. Touchdown, Lakeville North. Twenty to six, Panthers. Just a nice job, Menard leading the way. Pushes that Egan backer out of the way, and then Clark had no chances. He reached back. PAT upcoming. Colander trying to go three for three on PATs. And he does. Eight seconds to go, quarter number two. 21-6, Lakeville North. Things are, things are bright on the neon, in the neon student section. I guess literally and figuratively. This is their squad up 21-6. Hey, one more quick, uh, hey, checking in with us tonight. Uh, Becky Skirvin, she's checking in from Nebraska tonight. Becky, we were told we had to make sure we get your name on the air tonight. Glad you're with us. And coming up at halftime, we'll have the senior night presentation that happened before the game. And you get to see your grandson, Gavin, out there. Right now it's 21-6, Lakeville. Wildcats not out of this football game, but they, you know, again, with eight seconds left, I don't expect anything here, Mike Cook. But no. what I do expect them to do is Go into the go into the halftime, talk about it. See, you know, hey, what's working, what's not working. They can't continue to trade touchdowns with the Panthers. No. Panthers are too good, and they're and they're already behind. They're going to need a stop on defense. That's it. Uh, it's bottom line. And if they can't get that done, then then Lakeville's going to win this football game. But that's the test for the Wildcats. Can they do something either on special teams or on defense that's going to create an opportunity for their offense? Well, we'll see if Matt Nice can maybe break one here if he even gets an opportunity. If you're north, don't you just squib it here? I think so. I don't I think mean, to even give Egan a chance to run. Yeah, to be well, fair. I mean, you get a chance, but it's not going to be one of your, you know, yeah. deep back return guys. A 
little pooch kick. And that will be Clark's going to have to field that. And he's down at the 20-yard line. Castle will have time for probably one play. Well, I have to say that was a beautiful pooch kick. That that thing, we couldn't see it from our vantage point because it was right in front of the Wildcat bench. Watch here on the great replay. That ball just dies, and he's got to pick that up. Now I wonder if he had stepped out of bounds and picked up that ball. I wonder if that would have been meant the ball was out of bounds. In the, remember, the no. pro, the, in the pro so. game, it's that way. In the pro game, it's that way. So, anyway. I'll bet, I'll bet they know what the Marriott and Piscataway. Yeah, I'm the sure somebody's that screaming is. at the at the, uh, at the TV right now saying, guys, guys. Cats take a knee. Cats go to the locker room. They have six. Unfortunately for the Egan Faithful, the visitors from Lakeville North have 21. <laughs> well, I think, you know, first half was, look, the first quarter was all Lakeville North. Yep. All Lakeville North and really just, you know, it, it's it may be fatal here. You know, it may be a situation where the Wildcats play with North the rest of the the rest of this game, and, and it's you know tit for tat back and forth, and they're successful, but they've spotted them too much of a lead. You know, we'll we'll see how this goes, but Wildcats right now have some adjustments to make, especially on defense, because they've got to do something to stem the flow of the of the of the Lakeville Panther attack. Well, USA is the theme tonight in the pit. Hopefully, the Eagles students will have plenty more to cheer about in the second half. Because right now as we go to the break, it's Lakeville North Panthers 21, your Eagle Wildcats 6. You're watching ETV, your home for Wildcat sports. Line and 
Today we're doing the annual Cats vs. Cops, where we play a seven-on-seven -seven game against uh, cops here in Egan. This was actually an idea a couple years ago of our police chief, Roger New. He said we should play a touch football game, and him and our former president, Jack Esser, made this happen. Myself and another community member, uh, Jack Esser, were thinking of ways to try to bring the community together, and he said, would you be interested in playing flag football uh, against a high school team before the season kicked off? And I said, yeah, why not? And three years later, here we are. It's an opportunity for us to get back to the community, get a chance to connect with our local police officers and the way they've been able to do stuff in the community for us. It's a chance for us to have some fun out there and play what we do on Friday nights with them. One of the most important parts about this event is just trying to bring the community together. We never knew that it was going to grow to this extent, but uh, we're glad that we could just be part of this event and uh, we just appreciate the community support. Our police force is awesome. And for us to be able to do this with them, I think is, is just, it shows that they're looking for ways to be out in the community. So we come together and we play seven on seven and we have a blast out there. I love anything we can do to build that relationship. They do so much for us. So it's a great way to give back to them. And you know, it's a night for them to take off doing their duties as police officers and enjoy being a high schooler like we are and having some fun playing some football. We're the Egan Wildcats, but like, we're all Egan. We're all one team. It's a great event and it's a lot of fun.
Right, we welcome you back inside Wildcat Stadium. We're at the half as you look at the highlights. Yeah, a lot of them are for the team in white. That's because Lakeville North is up by a 21-6 count as we get set for second half action. Sawyer Wilkie, number 24 in white. 101 yards rushing thus far for the Lakeville North Panthers. And look, Brooklyn Evans with a nice run for the Wildcats. Finally got down and Schwamm. All the running backs do all the hard work. Carson Schwamm gets the glory once again with a one-yard quarterback keep. Yeah, I think that's called poaching. Uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll have to talk. I don't think anybody really cares all that much about it. But that being said, the Wildcats have a big test here coming up here in this first drive of the second half. The Lakeville Panthers will start with the football. Yep. The Wildcats cannot afford to trade foot touchdowns with these Panthers anymore. They've spotted the Panthers two scores. This cannot be a, we're gonna play it even both sides of it. You know, it's they've gotta get a stop. They've gotta find a way to make a stop. And if that means adjustments, if that means bringing up extra D linemen, that means attacking uh, with blitzes to the off, off tackle area. I don't care what it is, it's just gotta happen. Otherwise the Wildcats are gonna get a steady dose of Sawyer Wilkie. As you look at the pit on the Egan side, USA the theme tonight. Neon is the theme for the Lakeville North Panthers and a great student turnout here tonight. We're in the red, white, and blue for the Egan Wildcats. Again, two weeks from tonight, the Forest Lake Rangers come to town for homecoming 2023. I'm sure the pit will be out in full force that night as well. Again, next week the Wildcats go to Farmington. I believe that is the Farmington homecoming as well. Lakeville North, by the way, they've got Mayo next week, which I believe is their homecoming over at Lakeville North High School. And then they've got, they're at East Ridge, and then they finish with Burnsville for Lakeville North as we currently sit in week five action here in high school football. One thing to keep an eye on in this half, weather is going to get, is on the way. We were looking at radar, a couple people are talking about it. There's some... There's some colors on the radar that are moving this way. And they're not green colors. No. They're red and yellow colors. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you know, stick with us as long as you can. Uh, we're going to broadcast as long as we can. Um, the concern, of course, is not so much rain, it's lightning. Yep. And if we have lightning strikes or lightning, visible lightning in the distance, uh, there's going to be a 30-minute countdown from the last lightning, visible lightning. And yep. uh, so we might be in a situation where late in this game, maybe in the fourth quarter, uh, we, we have to address that issue. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope it does hold off, although we've been told some of the games in the West Metro are currently in weather delays, and uh, looking at the radar, it's, it's moving this way. So uh, fingers crossed we can get the bulk of this one in. Cats are going to kick things off to start half number two. Oh, Mike, I was going to say, if we take a look at the pit there, having a good time. The resurgence of this Wildcat football program has made a positive impact on the high school community. I think that's fair to say. And it's not, and again, we've talked so many times about how this isn't just a football game, it's a community event, right? We've got food trucks, we've got marching bands, we've got dance teams doing things, we've got all sorts of stuff going on. We've we've got you know productions you know coming up for Egan High School. They've got the Midsummer Night's Dream coming up uh, in October, the first week of October, the senior preview on the fourth with shows on the 5th, 6th, and 7th. Uh, of course, there are presentations and, and uh, plays and uh, yeah, theater presentations at the other high schools as well here in the fall. And you now it's not just a football game, it's a community event, Mike Cook, and that's where we're at. 100% agree with you, Nathan, and as, as North's going to field the kickoff at about their 15-yard line. And they'll start back at about their 30-yard line. And you mentioned the dance team. We didn't, have, we weren't able to record it, but at halftime you had the junior dance team or the dance team clinic kids that were out there as well. So a lot of elementary school students out there with the high school dance team. Kind of a nice thing to see out there. And before I forget, I want to give a shout out to the Egan High School Choir. To the national anthem at yesterday's Twins game. I don't know which choir it was, or it was all the kids, and I'm guessing it was all of them because I'm going to guess there were 150 kids out there. But nice job by the Egan Choirs at the anthem at yesterday's Minnesota Twins game. The Central Division champion, Minnesota Twins. First play of scrimmage here in the second half. Lakeville North going to get about four. Watch the left guard come across, make a nice block there on the against the white that was 
Michael Anderson coming across, making a nice trap block that time on Alex Lose. Less, yep, less, sorry. My eyes are not what they used to be. No, it's L-O-E-S-S -S for the last name, but it's, I know I've said it's it as less. well, and I've been told it's less. It's only our third game of the year for you and I. Yeah. First down and plenty more. Wilkie outside, can he get past Clark? He does. There's another busted tackle. From the 34 of Lakeville North to the 29 of Egan. That's a 37 yard scamper. And that was some ugly, ugly tackling by the boys in blue. Uh, one missed tackle, two missed tackles, three missed tackles, uh, three and a half missed tackles. I mean, it's, guys, it's, it's, you know, it's just not gonna work. You, you, we cannot do that. The Wildcats have got to wrap up. He's too good a runner to do that. And I get it that he's a good runner, but you gotta go for his hips. Stop trying to tackle him around his, his, his shoulder pads. Grossman to throw it. He's got his tight end on the far side. And he avoids a tackle, gets down to about the 10 yard line. That's roughly an 18 yard pickup that time for number 11 in his third catch of the game for Sebastian Fries. It's a 6'3 junior. Checks in at 220. And they're going to spot that ball at about, actually about the 12. So give him 17. Well, you run well, and then your quarterback's able to do the bootleg out to the side, and he was, he had all day out there, Mike Cook. He, he, he couldn't did. have even taken it off and run it himself. Wildcats are really on their heels. Ben Larson, that Egan defense, looking to make a stop. Grossman, Grossman, end zone, got his man in the corner. Did he get his feet in? He did. Touchdown, Panthers. Wayne Johnson with the catch. I... I, it's, I mean, this is an incredible catch, and I sure hope our ETV crew's got it. Let's see what we can see here. Maybe slow-mo it down as it gets closer. He catches the... I don't know how... No, that... No. Uh, I want to see that left knee again. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I can't tell for there, from there. It's 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 a, it, it's a touchdown. The referee said it's a touchdown, but it's it was, it was a close call. Yep. It's one of those where if they would have called it the other way, I don't think you'd, you could make a, a solid argument either. Yeah, to be honest, I to be honest, I think the receiver kind of got up. He didn't immediately celebrate, Mike. I think maybe he thought, eh, I don't know if I was in or out. In any well, event, it's touchdown. You were in. It's 28-6. And we'd mentioned before that drive Lakeville North started uh, with about three and a half to go in the first half. Potential for a wraparound right around halftime. Well, they went down, they scored. Got the ball right here, less than two minutes. They scored. It's 28-6 north. Yeah. Well, and the, the wind is starting to pick up a little bit here in Wildcat country. Well, if the Wildcats were looking to uh, to write an interesting story and have a massive comeback, they have, congratulations, they've got the first half of that story. <laughs> uh, now they need to get the second half yep. of that story up. Yep, absolutely. Give another shout out, Mike and Tony Tuttle probably checking in from Dallas once again tonight. Both Thielen's grandparents. So we've had Dallas, we've had Texas, Wisconsin, New Jersey, Nebraska. I think that's it for all the, all the states we've got covered. Well, tonight so far. Tonight, tonight, yeah. And those are the ones that we know of. Well, that's which we're in the third quarter here, Mike. We're what? We're in the third quarter. Third quarter, yeah. We still have time. I think it's the first quarter. No, 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 no. 28-6. And this one should be returned a ball. Barely. Ison nearly stepped out. Gets it near side. Tiptoes along the sidelines. Gets out near the 40-yard line. Nice return by Egan's number 20, the 5'9 junior. And Ison's one of those kids. I just keep thinking he's gonna break one. Oh, he absolutely is gonna break one. The question is, when's it gonna happen? Right. I was surprised at that. Just a little disappointed that actually he fielded that ball. But then he makes. But the great thing there is that I think the coverage had flowed to the middle, thinking if he catches this ball, he's gonna head to the middle where he's got more blocking. Instead, he goes right up the right up the sideline. Cole Meyer, your center. Carson Schwann, your quarterback. Straight ahead. Well, I should say off the left side, minimal pickup that time. Number seven, first man in for Lakeville North is Reese Hunt. It's a couple yards that time for Gage. A 
Hunt did a nice job that time of closing down. There was good interior blocking that time by the Wildcats. You saw at the top of your screen, but from the outside, here comes number seven to ruin Tate Gage's day. Yeah, one yard, if they're going to stay on the run. He was down at the 41. Bullet switches to the right side of his tight end spot. Sisk, your lone receiver. Gage, your running back, gets four, we'll call it. Gets out near the 45 yard line. Third and five. Now, just looking at Sam Sisk before that play up at the wide receiver position, nothing even. Anything near his way tonight. Just wondering if it's something where you maybe try to hit Sam, just kind of thinking maybe that'll throw him off a little bit. I don't well, know. Well, it's, I think it's a good idea, Mike. And uh, you know, that being said, I think you want to pick your pick your battle, right? right. I think you want to pick a pick a down or distance where you think you you maybe get that defensive back looking in the backfield. Give it to Gage, first down and more. Sticks are gonna move as the ball goes into Lakeville North Territory. Eight yard pickup for Gage, sticks are moving. First down at the 47 of Lakeville North. A challenge here for the Wildcats is they are moving the football and that's some great blocking down Absolutely. the field. When I see when I see an, an Egan blocker, when I see Cole Wills eight yards down the field locked up, not driving a guy, that's that's definitely post. I mean, that's stuff that you, you want to take that and stick it on your wall. Jack Anson was leading the way as well. Absolutely. Straight ahead, bounces outside, gonna get eight tough yards. Gage once again, it's been Gage on all four carries this drive. Picked up 21 yards now in four carries. The Wildcats make it, making a lot of yardage, You're doing a good job of pushing up the middle, nice job there. Got, got still got guys locked on, I think that's yeah, I, let me see here. Let me just see if I can make sure I get this number right. That was Cole Meyer. Looked like Cole Meyer was blocking two Panthers that time, Mike. Anthony Highbury in there as well, 61 in that left tackle spot. Had a couple nice blocks so far on this drive for the Wildcats. Isom in motion. Isom, he'll get it. Isom cuts it up, and he's actually going to lose about a yard on that play. Fortunately, he did not lose the football. Upended nicely that time by A.J. Pasiga. Uh, needs to be better blocking at the point of attack for the Wildcats. Pasiga did a nice job defeating. Watch this block here at the point of attack. Brooklyn Evans. Uh, so Brooklyn Evans was trying to have his cake and eat it, too. He, was trying to, he tried to block the guy inside, then says, okay, I'm going to block the guy outside, and Madden could get to the outside. Unfortunately, the inside guy made the tackle. So just, just stay locked on him next time, Brooklyn, and, and lock him up. And Max Blaine, I stand corrected with the tackle that time for North. Third and about four, a long four for the Wildcats. As we approach the halfway point, quarter number three. Gage is going to be fourth and short for the Wildcats. Needed four, got about three and change. Now this is unlucky here as... You see Gage was well. Trust Gage, us. Gage was in Gage was in the fullback up back position. Ison was behind him. Yeah, there you go. So watch the surge over the right side. And the Wildcats, as you say, will go for it here on fourth down. Alex Less with a nice job of block back in on the offensive line. He kicked in with a nice block. Gotta go for it on fourth down. Schwam sticks. I think they're gonna move. Yep. Progress is there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the first down. I'm just looking at the official on the far side, and he was down a little further than the official on the near side. But bottom line, first down Wildcats at the Lakeville North 36-yard line. Well, mentality of the Wildcat offense now has to be, obviously, and, and again, it, it goes without saying, got to score. But you know, here's the thing. Don't worry about trying to go too fast. Don't try to worry about conserving the clock. Just get in the end zone. Get in the end zone, cut this thing to a two-score game, and then hopefully good things happen for you. Don't stress about how much time you're taking. Just do what you do well and stick it in the end zone. This will be play number eight on this drive for the Wildcats. All but on the ground thus far. We'll stay that way. North says they have the football. North has the football. 
Did not see who recovered it for North. Bottom line with 4.58 to go, quarter number three. Yeah, that ball, geez, somebody just popped him from the side. You know, was, let's take a watch, let's take a look. Gosh, uh, Menard recovered it. I'm not sure that was ever a clean handoff. Yeah, hard to tell. I, I it looked like he. Well, that was that was that was not helpful. No question about that. Nope. I, it's hard to tell. From their own 33 comes Lakeville North. 4:58 to go in the third. Comfortably in front are the Panthers. And another five yard, maybe six that time for North. Ripplinger that time the ball carrier. You know, we are reaching a point, Mike Cook, where the defense is going to start to get a little worn down. I mean, they've the the Lakeville North Panthers have had the, they had the, first, the last drive before half. They've had another drive in the beginning of this half, and now the the Wildcat offense is they didn't go three and out, but they they gave the ball back to them relatively quickly. Yeah, they got a couple of first downs and then the the fumble, and of course Menard falls on it. Pretty good guess for who else or who would do it. And there, and that's going to be close to a first down for Lakeville North on a third effort. I believe that's Ripplinger on the carry. I give him the first down. I, th I think I they are. going to be short. Sticks are the sticks did move. Nice job of hanging on to that football too. That was a good job by the Egan defender trying to get in there on the strip. I, that might have been Will 55. Six yards those first down Panthers. The Wildcats are really up against it now. They've got to do something to, to stem the flow here. They've got to get a turnover or a stop. And if you're Lakeville North, you just continue to run this football, don't you? As I say, that Grossman goes to the air, got his man Johnson near side. That's going to be close to a first down as he's pushed out of bounds right in front of Egan coach Nick Johnson. It was Ozzie Cooper. Pushing him out. Sticks are going to move. What I liked there particularly was the, the idea that the quarterback boots. Now, again, he's left-handed. He's left-handed, but he boots to the right and fires a strike. That was a nice little pass to the corner. It wasn't the longest pass, but it required a substantial amount of accuracy. And you see how much time Grossman had back there. There was no Egan defender anywhere close. There's another nine yards on the ground this time for the Panthers. First carry on the drive for Wilkie. Now they're going to say eight officially. The way Lakeville's moving the ball, I don't think it matters if it's eight or nine. The first down's coming. As you see the flag starting to, the breeze is starting to pick up again here in Wildcat country. As we mentioned a little bit ago, there's radar has rain coming this way. Timeout taken. Not sure if it was by. We got an injury timeout for, go. Yep, for Lakeville. There you go. Another lineman just a little slow to get up. He'll limp off just a little bit. That's number 62, Carter Crawford. I want to mention something. Brian Vossen told me this before the game. Number 64, Ben Stevenson, and number 68, Tate Anderberg. Both of those linemen for Lakeville North have dropped 40 pounds since last year. Anderberg is still 6'8", 265. And Ben Stevenson is 6'1", still 260. But he said both of those guys dropped 40 pounds. That's, that's, that's tremendous. I mean, it's, and and to be a student athlete and to, and to understand that to play and to get healthy, you gotta do this kind of stuff. And what, you know, great discipline and kudos to those young men. Absolutely. And you're still nasty guys on the offensive line. And I mean nasty in a good way. There's Grossman going for the home run ball. Nope, that ball is way over the head of his intended target, Johnson. Well, in contrast to earlier opportunities, Connor Strop was, was knifing through. Uh, of course, with his size, it's not really knifing. It's more like bludgeoning <laughs> through. But I mean, he was, he was putting some pressure on the quarterback. Yep. Clock will stop. Third and two, upcoming for Lakeville North. 
Our bug says second and ten. It is third and two. I say, don't, you, don't you just give it to Wilkie here? Oh, absolutely. Keep it simple, stupid. Right? Sounds good to me. Wilkie. Hello. That's Ozzie Cooper. Land, or that's Iceland. That checked that number twenty. Now that is how you attack the line of scrimmage. Uh, yeah, just slightly. That is how you attack the line of scrimmage. Now, the Lakeville Panthers are gonna say, hey, we're gonna line up and do it again. Make you do it and stop us twice, but wow. Ison came out of nowhere, and I did not see who was, was a Cooper on the ground, but one of the two of them, between the two of them, they really did a number there. That was, it was Ison with the pop, and after that, I didn't even notice the guy on the ground. Is I think it's starting to sprinkle here as I look at the windows in the press box. I'm seeing a few water spots. Oh yeah, there's, there's a good shot from our from our crew. There's Wilkie. Yeah, that's safely a first down. Down to the 34 yard line. Pick up a four. Play number eight upcoming for Lakeville North on this drive. As the Egan student section apparently getting ready to melt as the men of them are starting to stroll out as the raindrops come down. I see a lot of neon leaving on the other side as well. Grossman. Boy, we've seen that play work really well. He keeps going to that tight end on that far side. I believe that's four catches now for Fries. And every one of them, I believe, has been that play. Yeah, they run those outs, and that's something that, you know, and, and that's one of the things that's it's interesting to me, Mike, is that we've, we're at a point where every team has got film on the other team, right? I mean, this isn't the first game of the season where you don't know what you're going to see. And it's interesting to me that, that Lakeville has done that, as you say, several times. They've run that 9, 10-yard out, you know, and it, it really sets them up well when they run that boot. Yep. Oh, fish. Lake. Yeah, Lakeville takes a timeout. Hey, let's give a quick shout out to uh, places people are heading out to after the game tonight. Absolutely, you're gonna give a shout out to Cooper's Tap House Tavern 13 and Wyatt's, the partners here for three of the big partners here for the Wildcat Ladder Crew, and of course that Egan Arms Public House. Uh, the there are Bogo pints before and after the games. Just wear your Wildcat gear, and it doesn't matter whose game. Ninth, tenth grade, junior varsity, varsity. Just show up and you get a Bogo at. Egan Arms Public House. I also want to give a shout out to our friends at Wildcats, Burgers and Bottles, the Bullside House on the Amo Kitchen and Rail Canes, Devani's, Chick-fil-A, Taco John's, and Domino's. And on October 6th, the away uh, parents get together is going to be at Kelts Pub in Farmington. So I'm going to give a shout out there to that institution and let you know that the ladder crew has set that up so there will be an opportunity for parents and fans to get together at Kelts on October 6th. Again, that'll be the next Wildcat football contest that'll be at Farmington on a Friday night. The winless Farmington Tigers, although they've been, they put up a fight against North a week ago as Ripplinger inside the 10. 18 yard pickup that time by Ripplinger. And then Farmington, they only lost by eight to Rosemont last night. Well, high school football is a many splendored thing in many ways, uh, Mike, and, and you you know, you have teams that look great, and then, I mean, for instance, the Edina Hornets beat the Wildcats here in week one. Pounded them. How, destroyed them. Ran how, past them. How many games have the Edina Hornets won since? I believe they were one and three coming into tonight. That's correct. So they had lost the next three, as you see. The weather starting to roll in, and people deciding, yeah, maybe I need to start heading to the end of the car. You sure it's the weather? I think it's the weather. Okay. Grossman rolling near side. Little sidearm. And another catch for Freeze. That is down to the five. Again, just nice job of using his tight end tonight. Pick up of, yeah, give him maybe three. Clocks does stop. Pushed out of bounds, Tyler Boats. 33 in there for the Wildcats. Henry Heinlein. Linebacker. Well, the Wildcats, regardless, you know, and the reason I bring up Edina is, you know, the Wildcats after that Edina game, Mike Cook looked like they were in real trouble and then came out and took care of business against Mayo, took care of business against Rosemount, played a Lakeville South team very, very tough. They need to rally now. Ripplinger to the one, maybe the one and a half. 
And what I mean by that is they need to rally. They need to be mentally strong and realize, hey, this is a situation where, you know, we're going to play this game out. We're going to do the best we can. We're going to get some more points on the board maybe. But at that point, it's time to, it, you know, it's time to focus on the next opportunity. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Lickfield's North does not have to run another play. 28-6, Panthers leading the Wildcats after three here in Wildcat country. You mentioned it earlier, too. Don't forget, folks, coming up, Egan High School presenting a Midsummer Night's Dream October 5th, 6th, and 7th here at the high school. October 4th, there'll be a senior preview. For tickets and more information, be sure to check out the Egan High School website. She mentioned our next broadcast will be the homecoming game, Forest Lake, in two weeks. And as you look at the discussion going on down on the field, I know they've been looking out the back of the press box here, and I'm guessing that might be a chat about the weather. Well, in two weeks, uh, the uh, Forest Lake Rangers will, the be, Rangers. Coming, will be coming to town. Uh, yeah. Next Thursday, next Thursday, EGTV will have boys and girls varsity soccer against the Lakeville North Panthers okay, here see. at Wildcat Stadium. Let's see if we have an announcement here on the anything. Looks like we're going to keep playing. Now as we get set for the fourth quarter. We're going to be su suspending the game for lightning at this moment. Uh-oh. Both teams will need to go to their saves, uh, their locker rooms. Well, there's the words we did not want to hear. Lightning is visible, and we're not talking east of you. This is the bad weather kind of lightning. Both teams instructed to go to their locker rooms. Fans will be instructed to leave the facility. And again, in the, you mentioned it, Nathan, in this severe weather alert, it's 30 minutes when you see a lightning strike, and then it's 30 minutes every time you see another one. That's right. So That's we could right. go 29 minutes without a strike. They see another one, it's another it's 30, 30 so. minutes. So just to want to finish my thought there on, on soccer, the reason I bring that up is the Wildcat boys are go, are pushing Rosemount for the top spot in the South Suburban Conference. So that'll be a big game on ETV. And the girls, the Lakeville North Panthers, are the, are the team behind the Egan High School girls in the South Suburban Conference. So so it may be that that game, if the, if the girls take care of business against Farmington, maybe it's not a big deal. But... If not, if there is a stumble against Farmington, that that game could be for the South Suburban Conference Championship, and that would be a heck of a matchup here on ETV. Well, unfortunately, right now we're going to be in a weather delay here on Egan TV. Again, as we hope to get the fourth quarter going in a half hour or so, it's Lakeville North 28, Beacon Wildcats 6. We're going to take a break, and hopefully we'll be back with you sooner than later here on ETV. Thank <laughs> you.